everyone, it's time to get your news round up. My name is Ifwa Kwa Harrison and this is what's coming up in this edition of News Generation. A big scandal has hit the Ghana judiciary. We'll tell you all about it. Then the general election is still over a year away but already things are getting interesting. It seems like a lot of people are going to try to be president. You'll be telling us who your ideal president is. And it's back to school for a lot of you already, how you are dealing with the change of a new class. Send us a Facebook message on that right now if you can. I'll tell you how you can get in touch with us when I come back. Of course, we'll also meet my co-host Akesi Moke in a bit. News Generation, supported by Cowbell with Vitoid. Thanks for staying. As always, my name is Ifwa and I'm with Akesi Moke. Hi, Casey. Hello. Ifa. You look how very lovely you? today. Oh, thank you. You too. You thank you. Lovely. Thank you. So, how has it been? It's back to school already. Next week. Next week for you, but some of your friends are in school already. Some of them are. All right. Okay. So, before we get to that story, just let us know how people can get to us on social media. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash newsgenerationgh and on Twitter at newsgengh. All right. Now, let me tell you about our first story. There's a scandal in the judiciary. Investigative journalist Anas Aremiao Anas filmed about 180 judges and workers in the judicial service taking bribes. Even before the video is re was released, there are reports of some judges going to court to stop the journalist from releasing his work. We'll bring you that story. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. Well, Akesi, let's finally have a look at that story. Um, have you heard about it? I have on the radio. Yes, on the radio. What did you hear about it? I heard that he released a video of some judges taking bribes and they're not so happy about it. Yes, so that's exactly what we're going to look at. We'll be right back. For two years, Anas Sarimeyo Anas has been investigating dealings within the judiciary. He filmed unrecorded conversations in which some judges and workers within the judicial service received bribes. Those involved are said to be some judges from the highest courts to other people who are employed to work within the court system. For years, some institutions and individuals have accused the judiciary of being corrupt but have never had the proof. Such people now feel their claims are justified. Already, some judges are said to have collapsed and others have chosen to leave the service but have not been successful. Anas Arimeya Anas has sent a list of those involved to the judicial service asking that they be removed from office. Corruption in the judiciary takes different forms. For instance, someone who has been accused could bribe a judge to rule in their favor or pay a worker of the judicial service to hide the documents needed for the case. Some people can even pay to have others imprisoned even when they are innocent. The typical example of corruption is not the first time it has happened, nor will it be the last. I mean, like, corruption is the form of, like, when people use their position in order to get favor or due respect. So when a judge takes bribe, the judge knows that he's doing a bad thing, but he doesn't really dwell on that fact because he knows he's going to get something worthwhile out of it. It creates a great sense of insecurity because if judges are taking bribe, to free prisoners, it doesn't create a safe society, not at all. Oh well, the rate of um, social vices such as stealing though increase drastically because the people supposed to be behind bars are rather set free, so the rate of vices will be increased. Yeah, what sure. should be done I mean, about this, this thing? Um, the courts, they should know the right people to be put in the right positions. So I think the people who run the courts and put the people in positions should make sure that the people there are just and equal. Um, first of all, those who are caught should be punished in a way that will serve as a deterrent to the other judges. And second of all, they should assign people who should go on checks so that these things will not occur anymore. Akesi, do you agree with your friends from Christ the King? Yes, I do. All right, what, what are we looking at next? Let's look at other stories in the local news round.
Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari visited Ghana for a day on Monday. This is the first official meeting between President Mahama and the Nigerian leader who discussed Ghana-Nigerian relations. Meanwhile, the NDC Youth Polling Station organizer George Boating has been stopped from picking nomination forms to contest President Mahama. Boating says he will sue the party. The NDC will be holding elections to select people who will represent the party in December 2016. And in entertainment, the 2015 edition of the Etal Adun Press has been cancelled. The show, which was to come off on Saturday, September 12, was cancelled because the main act, Hezekiah Walker, is ill. Popular UK singer Ed Sheeran is heading to Ghana to record new music as part of a career adventure in Africa. The 24-year-old English singer, songwriter and musician said he is looking for inspiration for his new album. It is not yet clear when the British pop star will land. Hey, you guys should have seen Akesi when she heard Ed Sheeran is coming to Ghana. She was on the floor. I guess he's your favorite artist. One of my favorite. One of your favorite yes. artists. Well, we don't know when he's coming to Ghana yet. I will be there. I must be there. You must be wherever must be he there. is. Yes. What if they don't tell us when he's coming? Oh, they have to. They have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on and talk about some other issues. Now, a report by UNICEF on child exploitation and abuses indicates 14% of children in Ghana have used the Internet for pornography. Experts believe this also has security implications for the country. So what could be encouraging this trend? trend among young people we have been having a conversation with some pupils from christ the king international school about this problem in whatsapp let me start with you joycelyn are you shocked to hear that you know young people like you are watching pornography online yes i'm very shocked because um pornography in Ghana's setup, is 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 it's very bad. But young children tend to watch other like foreign movies and feel like it's okay for them to watch the pornography. What about you, Eriko? I mean, about 15% of you know young people are watching porn online. That's according to UNICEF. Mm, I'm not shocked. Mm. Tell us why are you not shocked? I'm not shocked because um, we have introduced technology and social media and the internet to our daily life so and wherever you go on the net they are all over there so i mean they can watch it anytime and also it's also free available to watch it so i'm not shocked that things are watching pornography i'm not shocked because there are no restrictions on the internet parents are supposed to restrict their children but they don't so they have the free will to just open a, a porn site and watch. I mean, there are no restrictions in some instances, but what do you think will be motivating, you know, young people, teenagers to, to be going online to watch porn? Curiosity. They've watched movies and series that contain these sexual activities, and they think, why don't I investigate more to see what's going to happen? And they go on, watch, find it appealing, and keep watching. When it's available, so you don't need to pay any money, you don't need to do this. You are just go, go to the internet, open the site, and you just watch it. And it's also addictive, so if you, keep, if you watch once, you are tempted to go and watch again. I think it is peer pressure too, because if your friend watches this movie and comes to discuss it to you, you'll find it interesting and you also, oh, I'll also go and watch it and at the end of the day, you're also watching that pornographic movie. Certainly technology has become a part of us. You can't, you know, isolate technology from everything we do and you also need it in your studies. So if your parents gives you the opportunity to, you know, use the internet at home to, you know, help your studies. Now you're watching porn. How do you think parents can ensure that you know, young people do not move away from you know, their studies and start watching porn as you know, we are seeing happening now? Let me start with you. Parents should have time to monitor their children. They should give them an amount of time to use the internet. 
and keep an eye on them. Make sure that they are doing the right thing. And not give them everything they want. Sometimes they may want to use the internet. They'll tell you that it's for homework or research. You, you should not always believe it. The parents shouldn't always believe it. They should keep an eye on them. I think the problem is doesn't concern the parents. They are just providing a source of information. The problem is with the individual. The individual should stay true to his moral standing and teachings and say that no, pornography is not good and desist from it. The Ghana government should do something to restrict children from like going on to like going to YouTube and watching that thing. Because I think in one of the countries, I think China, there's a restriction that like no child is supposed to watch pornographic materials. So the government too has a part to play in this. Would you agree with parents who will now just move ahead and say that okay, you are not going online no. anymore? No, because we need the internet. But what if, I mean, the parent cannot, you know, be sure of, you know, what you're doing online? What, what should a parent do? There are various means parental control. They can use to control the um, sites they visit when they're online. And, um, like, you can also check them often, like, when like you can they can go onto the sites they've gone like you see when you open the um, web browser you have the history so you can monitor them with that one too so that they will use the history too. So you think i mean the solution to this problem is not you know banning kids from going online yes i think that we shouldn't ban they shouldn't ban us from going online because of this it's, and then they should be checking us regularly and they should also instill that discipline to in us. Finally, tell me, I mean, if you see your friends or colleagues, you know, engage in such acts, what will you tell them? I'll be disappointed. Very disappointed. I'll advise the person, tell the person that this is not good. You have to rethink and stop. I'll take the person through the effects of watching pornography and maybe that can help him or her. And I'll advise the person. I'll advise the person not to go to that side because um, when the person grows up, it might affect them. And I'll tell them the disadvantages of doing that. Your views on WhatsApp. So, Akesi, what do you make of this whole uh, thing with pornography among young people? 14% of children in Ghana have been found to watch pornography I on the internet. I think that it's increasing, and I agree with the children from Christ the King. They are, you are supposed to advise them not too harshly, or they won't really understand what you are trying to do. Take them through the effects, and everything will be all right, mm. hopefully. What about banning the internet? I don't think that's the best solution. How often do you use the internet? Every day. Every day. So what Every do you do day. on the internet? Um, I go on social media mm -hmm. and sometimes some research. Yes. So you don't think it would be banned? It should be banned? No, not no. at all. But what if, you know, if you have easy access, some of the children your age have the easy access to the internet and so have easy access to other things they won't be using it for social media or research like you do they're using it well, for pornography well you can actually the parent or the guardian can be with the child whilst using the internet or you can you know get this app that lets you block those um, porn sites that can prevent all of these things from happening all right, so some tips there from AKC. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to News Generation. For some, it's a dreaded moment. For others, it's not such a big deal. I'm talking about the transition to junior high school or even senior high school. It's back to school, everyone. And your friends from Sunflower School have been telling us how they are managing the transition. We'll bring you the story later. Seems there's a bit of a challenge. But Akesi, you tell me about your experience um, changing uh, from one year group to another year. How's that for you? Um, it's going to be very hectic because... 
you are going I'm going to write my BEC. It's mm -hmm. very important. First external exam. There's going to be a lot of pressure and everything. But I'm going to study hard. So it won't be, you know, so difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how you are going to work around the transition. Yes. Studying hard. Yes. Uh, are you anxious to meet any teachers in a new form that haven't taught you before? You know, sometimes when you change classes and there's a different teacher. Honestly, no, but the teachers are just going to get much more strict, so that's all I'll be facing. Now, on to Facebook. This one is from Samuel Aye. He says, school is full of fun. We are back once again. And talking about going to school, let's finally get you that story. The first when I got here, I thought it was going to be scary because when you hear some of the teachers, their names, you get frightened, but... When I got there, I saw that when you do what they ask you to do, you'll be free with them. I was very scared when I came here. But now I think it's okay because the subjects are good. And I don't have to... No, I don't behave like a child anymore because now I have to come before 6 steps. The teachers are disciplined and we are giving a lot of work. Some of them taught us in class 6, so we are used to them, but those who didn't teach us in class, so they are nice, so we are getting used to them. There were some rumors about uh, some of them, the teachers, the new teachers that I'm getting used to. Like things like they can a lot, but that's not true. They only do that when you don't do the right thing. When we started vacation classes, they told us they are do's and they are don't. So um, when we started, I was familiar with them. I knew what they wanted us to do. I knew what they wanted us to do. So when I started, when we, we opened school, I kind of got it easy. My overall experience is very good. Because the teachers, having been cane for <laughs> the two days I've been here, so I think it's good. It's a good start. No, I'm not fighting. I have confidence in myself. Whatever it is, I understand it well. So those are some pupils from Sunflower School. Yeah, if why well, don't you think it's a bit too early to get to school before six thirty, like the boys say? It's quite early. What time do you get to school? After six thirty, but before seven o'clock. What time does classes start? Around seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. Oh, I guess six thirty is not that bad then if yes, you start. Yes, but then up. if I live really far away and I have to be the traffic before getting to school, that means I have to wake up really early and I'll not get enough sleep and everything. What do you think? Well, let's say before they finish constructing the N one highway. <laughs> you remember Kaswa Road, yes. Malam Junction, there was always traffic there. Yeah. Maybe around that time, yes, mm -hmm. I would say traffic, but like uh, 6.30 if you leave the house around 5. Okay, you, she, the boy said before 6.30, by 6.30 is okay, but before... Before you I think it's too early. early. No, yes, actually. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. It's time to check out what's trending. And, you know, the queen is trending. The queen of England, Elizabeth II, has made the royal record. She's the longest reigning monarch in English history. And that's all for today, Akesi. Yeah, right? How can yes. they get in touch with us? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash newsgenerationgh and on Twitter at newsgengh. Yes, and my name is Ifwa Kwa Harrison. I've been doing this together with Akisi Moki. And that's it for this edition of News Generation. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day. News Generation, supported by Cowbell with Vitorid.